Today I'm taking these beautiful ingredients and turning them into a delicious pickled cauliflower. Why would you make pickled cauliflower? What would you ever do with that? Well, you can eat these on a charcuterie board. You can eat these as a side with a sandwich. Uh, you can even throw these on top of a salad. There's many uses for them. So it's very simple to make. So let's get started. So I'm going to start out first by making sure that my vegetables are well washed. And I need one cup of diced red pepper. Next, I'm going to thinly and evenly slice two cups of onions and that I will need a mandolin because I have no way to do anything evenly and thinly if I do it with a knife. So I'll be using a mandolin for this. And then we take our cauliflower and cut them up into bite-sized pieces, one to two inch pieces, and wash them well. Make sure you wash them well. So let's cut them up. Once we've got all our, I'm going to say broccoli, I keep wanting to say broccoli, once we, and I may have already said it, once we have all our cauliflower all cut up, what we need to do next is to boil it for three minutes. So you need to take a pot of boiling water, add four teaspoons of your pickling salt, remember it always has to be pickling salt because we will be preserving this by water bath canning. So four teaspoons of salt to your water, boil them for three minutes and then remove them immediately. So next up, in your saucepan, you're going to combine all the other ingredients that you have. So you're going to put in your pot the four cups of vinegar, two cups of sugar, your two cups of onion, your one cup of red diced peppers, and all your spices, your one tablespoon of celery seed, two tablespoons of mustard seeds, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and one teaspoon of turmeric. So now we bring this over to the stovetop, mix this all well, bring it to a boil. We gotta let this simmer for five minutes. My brine has simmered for five minutes. So now we need to divide this amongst all of our jars. I have a sinking feeling I may not have enough brine to backfill all my jars to one half inch headspace. I will keep my fingers crossed, but I am not very hopeful. I think I will have to mix up another batch of that brine. So right now we're going to separate this in all of our jars. I've got my steam canner heating up beside me because we will be steam canning these. I am guessing seven jars. So I'm going to try to divide this evenly. Oh my gosh, the color is so beautiful. Divide this into seven jars. Look at this. How pretty that is. Put like a little pinch in each jar and then we'll go from there. Now we fill the jars with the cauliflower, leaving, we have to make sure to leave a half an inch of head space. I have filled up all my jars. I ended up with six pint size and one half pint. Maybe I'll have enough brine, I'm not sure, but uh, let's get back filling and see. Nope, not enough brine. I'm missing some for about two bottles, so I'm going to mix up another batch. What I want, The way I'm going to do it is I'm not going to cut up all the onions and red peppers again because I already have all those in my bottle, so I'm just going to make up a, uh, like a half batch of the brine with all the spices in it. I'll half everything. And um, yeah, I guess I'm going to write that in my book to make sure that next time I do this that I remember because I've done this before, but I didn't remember I didn't have enough brine, so I'll have to write it down this time. So while we are waiting for that extra batch of brine to heat up and, and boil for a few minutes and simmer, I am going to debubble these jars and that way when the brine is done, all we'll have to do is just readjust the liquid, wash off the tops and put our caps on. Okay, we are back with our new batch of brine. So we are going to backfill these last two bottles. 
Now we always have to wipe down the rims of our jars to make sure that nothing is stopping our cap from sealing. Once you wipe down your jars, you're going to place your caps on top. You no longer need to sterilize, to boil, to heat your caps. Just make sure that they're clean, put them right on top. Then put your rings on your jars, fingertip tight. And transfer your jars over to your canner. We have to take a minute to admire how beautiful this looks inside the jars. And if you can just smell this to see how good this smells, oh, it's, it's, it's insane. So now we're going to put the cover on the steam canner. And this needs to process for 10 minutes, whether they're pint-sized jars or half-pint jars. This processes in the steam canner for 10 minutes. If you're not familiar with steam canning, you really should consider it. It is such an easy alternative as opposed to water bath canning. You have to fill the pot with water, bring that to a boil, make sure you have an inch of water. This takes very little water, so you just put enough water at the bottom to, to get to the, to the rack. And within five minutes, and I'm not even lying, this is boiling. Like, I don't even think it's been five minutes, especially if you heat it up before. So this is already boiling. This is already in the green section where it needs to be. There's a dial. And if you have a good look at that dial, there's colors. I need to be in the green section for my altitude and it's already there. So now I just need to time this and process it for 10 minutes. Once it's done, I let it sit for five in the pot with the cover and then that's it, it's done. Very simple. In the spirit of keeping it real, I'm going to show you what happened to one of my jars. It happens once in a while. Sometimes you'll get a little nick or a crack in your jar and uh, you don't realize it when you wash it. You know, you shouldn't always inspect your jars, but every once in a while you will get one jar where this happens. It's also possible I may have overfilled my jar. I may have not left the half inch uh, headspace. So anyway, lots of things can go wrong and this happens, thank God, not too often, and I'm kind of happy it was the half pint and not one of the pint jars, so I only lost the half pint, so not so bad. All the rest are all intact and doing very well. So just a few notes, once your jars have sit for 24 hours, don't touch them for 24 hours, then you remove the rings. The rings, you never store your jars with your rings on top because it could create a false seal. Also, be sure to write on top of your jars what it is and when you process them, when you can them, and that way you'll know how long you've had things in your cupboard. Your canned goods, if when done properly, can stay in a nice, cool, dark, dry environment for a year and probably longer um, and still be really delicious and safe to eat. So keep that in mind. If you do enjoy my video, if you do enjoy my content, give it a big thumbs up. Don't be shy. Hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check back again soon to see what other content I will have coming out.